I made something up called the three M's. And I believe the three M's are a strategy to achieve financial, business, property, and investment success, but also a way to get out of trouble, to get out of financial, business, property, investment, trouble. I genuinely believe that. And the three M's are not anything brand spanking new or completely unusual. I've not created anything miraculous here. I've just turned something that's existing into a strategy. And I'll be honest, I made this for myself. I didn't make it for anybody else. So the three M's are money, machine, and mindset. And I'll explain each one and how it fits into a strategy. But before I do, the reason I came up with this is actually out of necessity and it was out of desperation actually, because as I talk to you right now, I would consider myself to be successful and certainly on a road to greater success. I believe that I'm doing well. My properties are all press. They're all profitable, reliable, easy, simple and safe. And that's the goal. All of my property investments must be press properties. My businesses are all profitable and efficient and they work well. I've got good teams running the various departments within my businesses. So I'm, I'm very financially comfortable and I'm continually growing and evolving. I'm investing in a diverse range of investments and I have a nice diverse range of businesses which all work and grow without me. So I'm very comfortable and very happy. I have a lot of time to spend with my family and my children and my wife. So I would consider myself to be doing very well. And I'm also, like I say, on a great path to continue growing and continue succeeding. I'm also very careful in that I don't want to just get complacent and ruin all that. I'd like to continue growing. I like the hustle. I like the graft. And I like seeing results. I like the creativity of business. I love it. So that's where I am now. And I'm not telling you that to brag because the next part will make absolute sense. It wasn't always like that. In fact, quite the opposite, where I was terribly struggling in business and I was working all the hours under the sun. I had no money. I was making no profit. I had no assets. I had no wealth. I had no savings. I was living month to month, barely paying myself for anything. And it was pretty tough. And when my first child was born, that's when I realised is the, is the wrong word, but I shocked myself into realising something has to change here. It can't go on like this. My, my son was born into my family. He didn't choose me. He didn't choose me and my circumstances. And so it was up to me to sort myself out. And so looking back on how I quite rapidly actually turned myself, my business and my investments into something much more successful is the three M's. And it's, I think anyway, I think it's transferable to business, obviously, to property, definitely, and to your personal finances as well. You don't have to be a business owner to get the three M's. And you certainly don't have to be a business um, a business owner to be wealthy. If you're an employee of any kind, then the three M's should be the way that you make sure that you're maximizing on your income, on your time, on your energy and everything that you do. The three M's worked for me and I can see it to be transferable to anyone. So those three M's once again, money, machine, mindset. I'll go through each one and how it can work for you. 
Um, but like I say, it was born for me out of absolute desperation and necessity after my son was born. So what I did, first of all, is I took a good old look at what I was doing. And I was working my ass off. I was working 12, 13 hours a day at least. But I was working on the wrong things, first of all. And I wasn't putting the right things in place. And again, this works for employees and business owners and property investors and landlords. If you've got a property right now and you're a landlord, whether you've got one property or 10, doesn't matter. This is how you should set out your strategy. So the first thing I looked at was money. Sounds really obvious, doesn't it? I was struggling financially, terribly, in fact. I had bailiffs knocking my door to take my stuff. I had, I was locked out of my offices one time because I couldn't pay the rent. It was, it was pretty awful. So I paid the staff late, which was one of the worst times of my life. Terrible. Um, yeah, so I started off with money and I thought, why am I not making any money? And this is going to sound so obvious, but you'll get me here. I was spending more than I was earning. That's it. It's as simple as that. It's the basic rule of business. Make more than you spend. And so the first thing I did was I wiped out all expenditure that was not necessity. Again, I'm not saying anything unbelievable here. I'm not reinventing the wheel. This is all pretty obvious stuff. What I'm doing here is turning it into a strategy. So, and it's not quite as obvious as it seems. I didn't just cancel all expenditure that I didn't need because I was spending money on speculative marketing. I was spending money on marketing in the hope that it would achieve results, but I didn't really have the right infrastructure in place to turn all of that marketing into actual business. I didn't have the right people around me. I didn't have the right systems and processes set up operationally in order to turn all of that marketing into actual business. Now, if you're a property investor and a landlord and you're thinking, well, I'm not a business owner, I'm not interested in all this, bear with me on this, because this is absolutely relevant. I believe, because property is business. You buy a product at a price, you either sell it at a higher price or you achieve an income from it by renting it out. That's basic business. So anyway, yeah, I, I reduced expenditure as much as possible without sacrificing the business. Now, that was step one. And to relate that into property, your mortgage. Get your mortgage reduced. Get the payments reduced. Make more cash flow so that you can reinvest that cash flow. Constantly review your mortgage. Constantly review your insurance. Constantly review everything that you spend out for and make sure that you're not spending out money that you shouldn't be spending out money on. The next thing was income. Yes, I was spending out too much money or more money than I was earning, but I also wasn't bringing in enough money. So I increased all the fees, everything. Everything went up to a fair market value. And you start to see now where this all relates to property. You have to constantly review your rent, constantly. It always has to be a fair market value. Now, I know I talk a lot about not charging maximum rent that you could possibly charge, and I do believe that. But it also has to be a fair market value because you, Mr. and Mrs. Property Investor, and Mr. and Mrs. Landlord, you've got to make profit in order to be able to provide the tenants with a secure, reliable, comfortable home. So that was the next thing I did, was I first of all, reduced expenditure, and I also increased income. And I made it right. I made it so that I was bringing in more than I was spending. 
It sounds really obvious. And I had to be ruthless. And I mean ruthless. I moved offices because the place I was renting was too expensive. I got rid of staff because they weren't fulfilling all of the roles required. I reduced marketing expenditure and focused on the basics. Pick up the phone, knock a door, send an email, send a letter. Now, as it happens, the marketing that I was doing was phenomenal and generated a lot of leads, a lot of business, a lot of inquiries, and it was working very well. But like I say, didn't have the infrastructure, the systems, the processes, the people to turn that into actual business. So, and look, that's all my fault. I'm the business owner in the same way that you are the property owner. You are responsible for all the successes and also all the failures. So that's the next thing I did. I increased the income to the fair market value. I started, because I was very cheap as well. I was also, and again, big problem for a lot of landlords. I was very cheap because I was a bit nervous that customers wouldn't use my company if I was the same price as other companies. How crazy is that? I genuinely thought, no, I don't want to increase my money, by my fees by too much because people won't use me. Same in property. Oh, I don't want to put the rent up too much, otherwise the tenants will leave. They won't be able to pay their rent. How crazy is that? No, I don't want to put it up to a fair market value because the tenants might leave and, and they're good tenants and I don't want them to, to not be able to afford the rent. Crazy, but that's the way we think. I've also had that thought when, with my first rental property, when my letting agency came to me and said, hey, we can put the rent up to this. And my first thought was, oh, I don't know whether I want to increase the rent. They're good tenants. Don't want them to be able to don't want them to struggle. Don't want them to not be able to afford the rent and have to move out. And then I'll have an empty property and no one will be able to rent it. Same with business. I didn't put my fees up because I thought no one will use it. No one would want to pay my company for that. So I was a bit scared of that. As I expect a lot of landlords who are not increasing the rent because they're scared of it. A lot of landlords would be like that. And I know so many private landlords who don't increase the rent because they're scared of losing the tenant. But you've got to feel that fear and do it anyway. You have a duty to your family to make profit, first of all. You've got a duty to the tenants to make profit, second of all. Because you have to be able to afford to fix problems quickly. What happens if the boiler blows up and that's 2,000 quid that you've got to find? And if you're not making enough profit and you're using your own income and you're using your own cash, then you're not being a responsible property investor. Anyway, so yeah, I increased the fee. So I'm still on the money part. And what I'm saying here, the first thing to focus on is the first M, which is money. Focus on your money. And you can do this same thing in your personal life, in your personal circumstances. If you are an employee and you are finding that you're getting to the end of each month and you haven't got much money left, it just means nothing more than you are spending more money than you earn. It's as simple as that. So if you want to have a comfortable life, just go through your bank statement. Do it today. Do it right now. Actually, do it after this episode where you go through all of your personal expenditure and you work out what you need. Let me tell you, give, give it to you another way. If you earn, I don't know, £3,000 a month, let's just say, three thousand. let's be a bit more cautious actually. Let's say you, you earn £2,500 a month but you're spending out 2,000 just on household bills. It's not leaving you with enough money to have any kind of life. Once you've done your takeaway a week, or one or two takeaways a week, or had a couple of 
trips to the pub or whatever, that's all gone. So you need to take action. And this is the first M. Money is the first M. If you want to improve your life in terms of your business, your property portfolio, your financial status, your financial security, the first thing you've got to do is money. Spend less than you earn. Simple as that. Spend less than you earn or make more than you spend. Either way, it's the same rule. You have to decrease expenditure and increase income. And you will be very fearful of doing that. If you're a business owner, you'll be scared of increasing your fees. If you're a business owner, you'll be scared of decreasing your expenditure because you'll think, yeah, but I've got to spend money on Google advertising or YouTube ads or Facebook ads, or I've got to spend money on this roundabout sign or this billboard or with the local newspapers. I've got to spend that money so that people see my brand. Fuck that. The way that people will see your brand is by you showing it to them. I think nowadays sticking a sign on a roundabout is a lazy way of advertising and expensive, by the way. So if you're a business owner, you've got to reduce your expenditure. If you're a landlord, you've got to reduce your expenditure. Reduce it to the optimal level. Optimal is the key word. I don't mean reduce it to the minimum it could possibly be, because you might sacrifice certain services and suppliers that you need, but reduce it to the optimum level. And by the way, back to business owners very quickly. When you're going through your expenditure, think of it in your own mind like this. If this business was only me, what do I need to spend out on? And here's another way to think about it. Work backwards. Start from the end, start from your goal and work backwards. Where do I want to get to? What do I actually need to get that? And it's the same in property. If you want to make £500 a month in profit, what do you need to charge in rent? And what do you need to spend out as expenditure? Simple. So money. And you can do that in your personal circumstances, like I say. Work out what you're spending out on each month. Spend less. No one wants to spend less. Everyone wants to live a lavish lifestyle. But let me put it to you a different way. If you've got children, then spend less on expenditures and use that money to invest in your children. And I don't mean invest in shares or crypto or business or property. You could do that. That would be great. If you could do that for your children, that would be brilliant. I'm talking about invest in them. Use that extra money on them to do things with them, to live experiences. And use that extra money to make it so that you don't have to work as much, so that you can invest your time into them and your energy into them. So money, number one. Once I'd sorted out the money... Everything else was so much easier. Because all of a sudden, I'm not trying to grow my business with this massive stress and pressure of constant failure and struggle and negativity. Now, all of a sudden, I broke even at first because I, well, I, I made a little bit of profit because I was spending less than I earned. Simple as that. <clears throat> and then what, what did I do with that profit? Bought a property. Simple as that. And then did it again, and then again, and then again. So money is the first thing. If you want to turn your life around and make yourself financially secure, there's no secrets. There's no special hidden magic strategies that only certain coaches and trainers know about. No, it's very basic. I could probably charge. You know what? If I put out there that I was going to do a training course on how to turn your, how to go from making not enough money to making lots of money using the three M's, I could probably charge for that. 
I'd much rather do this, get the information out there because it's nothing new. So that's M, money. So what had I done now? I'd sorted the money out. I was making more money than I was spending. I was all of a sudden making profit. It was amazing. And then I got scared because I thought, I don't want to lose this. I don't want to mess this up. So the next M is machine. Now I'd got my business into a position where it was making profit, but it was still very heavily reliant on me. I was still working 12, 13, 14 hours a day. I'd come into the office at 6, 6.30 in the morning and I wouldn't get home till 6, 6.30, 7, 8 at night. And then normally I'd get home and I would start, I would get the laptop open, work again. I'd do stuff on the weekends. It was relentless. So yes, my business was making profit, but it wasn't making profit without me. It was relying on me. And there's more. It wasn't able to grow without me. And it's the same in property. And this is why I'm doing it like this, because if you get the money bit right, brilliant. You've got a profitable portfolio. But there's no point in having a profitable, profitable portfolio or business if it's solely dependent on you. Because that means you can never stop. What happens if you go on holiday for a couple of weeks? What's what's going to happen to your business in that uh, sorry to your business and your property in that couple of weeks? Because what'll happen is you'll come back to a whole world of stuff to do. Well, I don't have that now. Now my business runs without me and it grows without me because I set up a machine. And you can do that in property. When you invest in property and you become a landlord, I, look, I call it landlord, but I don't think anybody should be a landlord. I think actually we should just be investors and then we should have a property infrastructure set up around us. It sounds really complex. It's really not. Don't be fooled by all these complex sounding training courses. It's so easy to build a property machine. Now, let me just set something straight, by the way. Everybody talks about passive income. That's kind of where I'm getting to with all of this. But passive income does not mean you never have to do anything for your money. That is not what passive income is. Passive income, in my opinion, is income that is generated through your investments and through your systems, through your infrastructures, through your processes, through your businesses, through whatever it is you create to generate profit, as long as it's not solely reliant on an hourly rate paid to you, that's passive income. If you are paid salary, wage, hourly rate, commission, that's not passive income. If you buy a property investment and you, you, and you achieve profit from that, that's passive income. It doesn't mean you never have to do anything. You still have to pay your accountant. You still have to check on things, do your taxes and all those things. There is always going to be something for you to do when it comes to passive income. Don't listen to anybody that says you can make profit for nothing without doing anything wrong. So anyway, machine. So what I did at this point is I was making profit and now I've got to set up a machine enables my business to make continue making profit. All this work that I just did to make my business profitable, I now needed it to continue without me so that I could then focus on further growth. So I set up a complete and entire infrastructure throughout my entire business where the right people we're doing the right things at the right time in the right order. It was all process driven. Every single part of the business, every single operation within the business had a process. And if it didn't have a process, I would I had a, um, a, a strategy in place that I would quickly identify that there is a process needed for that part of the business. 
and I continually built and built and built process on top of process so that everybody knew exactly what they had to do, when they had to do it, how they had to do it, what processes and protocols to follow, exactly. I'm hoping that by now you're seeing how machine really relates to property investing and landlording and certainly relates to being an anonymous landlord. That's the goal. Because no property investor gets into property because they want to be a tenancy manager or a lettings manager or an administrator or a, a contractor manager. Nobody gets into property investing to do that. Everybody gets into property investing because they want to make profit. They want to grow their wealth. They want to invest their money in order to provide for their families, whether that's now in cash flow or in the future in appreciation, whatever, or it's both. That's why we get into property investing. It's for the business part. Nobody gets into property investing because they think, oh, do you know what? I need a second job. I need to take on more responsibilities. I want to increase stress in my life. I want to spend less time with my children. Nobody gets into property investing for that. So that's exactly what I did. I built a entire machine for my business throughout to operate without me. And now that works brilliantly. And I'm, it gives me a buzz. Sometimes I just go out and sit in the office and listen to all the, the people following my processes, using my systems, and you know, going with all of the training and the, the development of all of this infrastructure that I've built, seeing them follow it and use it, that's a huge buzz for me. And it's the same with my properties. I have also built an entire infrastructure for my portfolio so that I don't have anything to do with it. I'm the investor. I'm an anonymous landlord. And I don't just mean get a letting agent to manage it. I'm talking about actually put a proper infrastructure in place, proper systems, proper processes and protocols, backup systems. And I, look, that sounds really complicated. I don't mean it to be. It really isn't. I could, again, I could probably charge a lot of money for a training course called the Anonymous Landlord, which would teach landlords how to be anonymous landlords, how to be profitable, how to have press properties, profitable, reliable, easy, simple, safe. How to do that, <clears throat> how to live that dream as a property investor, which is the reason we get into property investing in the first place. To not have anything to do with it. You've invested your money, you receive your profit. Repeat, that's it. So I built this entire machine within my business. And when I built it for my properties, that's when the anonymous landlord was born. Because quite simply, I'm talking to a lot of landlords and a lot of property investors, and they're all asking me about, you know, how did I set it up? How have I arranged all of this so that I don't have to do anything for it? And that's where it made me realise what happens when someone invests in property, they then think they have to do it all themselves. Do none of it yourself. The anonymous landlord is a strategy. It's a mindset. It's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. And there's a lot to it. It's not just about having the right people doing the right things. It's about your own mindset as a property investor and as a landlord. So these three M's were groundbreaking for me. Even though they were nothing new, I didn't reinvent the wheel. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. I genuinely believe that if someone has achieved something, then you can do that same thing too. Just copy them. If it's been done before, it can be done again simple. That's science. So that's what I did next. I built this machine and it was an amazing. I was so chuffed with it. And that enabled me to focus on growing my business in the same way that it enabled me in my property world to, you know, my property portfolio was making profit. And so that enabled me 
to focus on growth, both in my business and in my property portfolio. And that's what I did. And then with my business, I started setting up the same machine to enable my business to grow without me. And now we're in a whole different world because now my business operates without me and grows without me. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I make that sound great. I still work hard because I'm, I'm still on growth and development of the business. I still do a lot of that because I love doing it. I love marketing. I love all of that sort of stuff. It's my favorite bit. So I do a lot. But I also enabled myself to grow my portfolio because I'm now profitable and now I can look for property investment deals and I've set up a little infrastructure around that. So all I do now is I identify property or property investment deals and I say yes or no. And then the infrastructure that I've set up goes and works. Largely without me. Property's different, but largely it works without me. I, 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 I'm a property broker which means I get offered tons of off-market property investment deals around the country. And so I now offer those properties to other investors. And by the way, if you want to be part of that, just contact me. Tom at pinkstreet.co.uk If you want off-market, below-market value property investment opportunities that you won't find on the open market, great investment deals, then let me know. And I'll just connect you up with the right people. Simple. Um, anyway, yes, so that was the machine. And the last M, annoyingly, is the most important, but it's the one that we take notice of the least. Mindset. Whenever I was trying to get myself out of trouble, I would watch YouTube videos, I would read books, I'd listen to audio books, listen to podcasts, because I was looking for somebody to tell me what to do. I was looking for somebody to say, do this first, then this, then this, and your business will be successful. <clears throat> but the problem was, as I said earlier on with money, I was scared of increasing my fees, I was scared of wiping out ruthlessly my expenditure. I was scared of all that. So I just didn't do it. I knew I had to increase my fees years ago. I knew I was too cheap. I knew I wasn't charging enough money. Years and years and years ago. But my mindset back then was, well, if I charge lower prices, then more people are going to want to use my company. So I'll make less profit, but have more customers. No. That is probably the opposite of smart business. But my mindset was, first of all, fearful and scared that people wouldn't use my company because if I increased the fees. Second of all, scared of increasing my fees would lose all the customers that I got. So I didn't do it. And then there's the fear of the next part, which was the machine part. You know, I was scared of not doing it all myself because I didn't think people could do could do certain things as well as I could. Absolutely they couldn't. It's because it's my bloody business. But you know what? Two people doing a job at 60% is better than you doing, doing a job at 100%, which is also impossible, by the way. You cannot work at 100%. Nobody can. Perfect is not real. And the other thing is that actually you're quite imperfect because you might be able to keep control of everything, but you can't grow your business. You can't improve your life because you're doing everything and it's all on you. And even if you're not doing that much, it's still reliant on you. And that's stressful. There's something in there that's quite pressuring when it's all reliant on you you feel like you've got to check your emails at nine at night first thing in the morning you wake up in the morning got to check your emails so <clears throat> the mindset is probably the part that we think about the least and is probably the most important because i learned so many amazing strategies from youtube videos books audiobooks podcasts 
watching talks and all of those things, I learned so many unbelievable strategies, but I didn't really do any of them. I wanted to. Oh, I massively wanted to. And I knew that certain strategies would work, but I never did them because I didn't have the right mindset. And it's the same in property. And this is where I think the anonymous landlord and the other two M's, money and machine, really complete themselves. In order for you to be an anonymous landlord, in order for you to be profitable, reliable, easy, simple, safe in your property portfolio, in order for you to be successful in your business, then your mindset has to be one of creation rather than the doing. I've, I've described that as best as I can. But what, what I mean is, is that if you're a business owner, you've got to create a business. You're not you're not your you're not the business the business is the business so you have to create the business you have to build the business so that it can run it is a business the business is an it the business is not you and you have to get that into your mentality of okay this job needs to be done who is going to do it not i could just get that done quick no that's not that's not going to work yeah, you could, right, an email comes in of an in, with an inquiry from one of your customers and your first thought is, oh, do you know what, I could just deal with that quickly. Yes, you could, but that will not be, that's actually quite negative and detrimental to your business. Actually, what you should do is, who could do this for me? Who can deal with this issue? It's the whole, <laughs> give a man a fish, and he'll eat for a day. Teach him to fish and he'll feed his family forever. That's the point. Yes, you could fix that problem today. But what happens when 20 of those problems come in tomorrow? Well, you can't deal with all of them. So then you start panicking. Then you start trying to get it all done. Then you start working all the hours under the sun. Then you just start feeling like you're on your own and no one else is there to help you. It's all reliant on you. And when you make a mistake, it's all on you. And when you get a success, it's all on you. But they don't happen very often because you're always dealing with shit. You're always fighting fires and you're always solving problems. It's always one problem after another problem after another problem. So you have to build your business in order to do the first two M's. In order to make profit, so you've sorted the money. And in order to operate by itself so you've sorted the machine and that takes your mindset your mindset has to be it's a machine i'm not a fucking spark plug i'm not the fucking battery i'm not the radiator no it's a machine hopefully that that last bit just made sense what i mean is is that you're not in the machine the machine is the machine you're building the machine Richard Branson doesn't deal with customers in his business. And there's a reason for that. It's because he recognises that in order for his business to be successful, he has to have all of the cogs in place, all of the parts in place, doing what they need to do, not him. Now, look, if you're a business owner and you think, well, I haven't got enough money to pay the staff. I haven't got to, you know, I've got to do it all myself. No, you don't. I promise you, you don't. The first thing you've got to do is the M, money. Fix the money, and then you'll have enough money to make the machine. And then when you make the machine, that's when you are free. But in order to do any of it, you must have the mindset. And the mindset has to be, I am not the business. The business is not me. The business is the business and I am the builder of that business. And also, this is gonna sound really harsh and I'm gonna relate this to property. This is perfect for property. Your business is not your baby. It's not your, your life and soul. It's not your precious heart or whatever. Your business is nothing more than a vehicle 
which is designed specifically to make profit without you. That's what your business is. That's what a business is. That's what any business is. It's actually illegal to run a non-profitable business, unless you're a non-profit organization, obviously. You know what I mean. It's illegal to be insolvent. So by its very nature, your business is nothing more than, than an entity which is designed to make profit. And that's your job. So when you think of it like, like that, when you think, okay, my business is just a business. I have to build the business to make profit. Then you'll start thinking, okay, if I'm doing that, I'll need this person doing this role. I need that person doing that role. I need this person doing this role. I need this system in order to make sure that this is reliable. I need a process for this and a process for that. Everything needs to be a process. And if you're a property investor or a landlord, then this is perfect. Because what happens is, a contractor goes out to your property to fix a pipe or whatever. Well, if you're reliant on that income, then you're going to start arguing every single invoice, every single charge. You're going to, it's going to make you uncomfortable. It's going to irritate you that it's just cost you 100 quid or 150 quid or 200 quid out of your profit to fix a problem. And that's where you start sacrificing your mental well-being. You start sacrificing your energy, your time, because you're arguing with everything. But what you also do is piss off the people that are in the perfect position to make you an anonymous landlord. So your mindset has to be, when it comes to property investing, some months you'll make profit, other months you won't. Some months you'll make more profit than other months. If you are relying on that rental profit, you need to go back to the first M and arrange your personal finances so that you're not reliant on your rental profit. Because when you're not reliant on your rental profit, it means it can grow and you can reinvest and grow your wealth, grow assets, grow profitability, grow your financial position for you and your family. And that will only come from your mindset of knowing that you are not going to be doing any of those jobs. You are not going to be dealing with anything to do with the business of property. So, the reason I wanted to bring this to everybody is because I genuinely believe that those three M's helped me go from absolute rock bottom, bailiffs knocking my door down, taking my stuff, struggling day by day, no money, no savings. I lost my house. I lost my car. I lost everything. Worst time of my life. I didn't stop. I kept telling myself that I will only fail at business when I quit. And that I will fail at 100% of the jobs and of the goals that I quit. I knew that I would fail if I quit. But I also knew that I wanted to achieve this goal. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to provide for my family and my children. I wanted to make something of our lives. And that's what I did. And breaking it down into the, these three M's has enabled me now to help other businesses and business owners by doing the same thing. I do exactly that. All right, look, there's a lot more to it than that. I've helped a few businesses now where what I do is I break it down into the three M's. Money, machine, mindset. Maybe I should start doing some training courses on this. I don't know. Maybe in the future. But right now, I just want everybody to achieve their goals. That's what I want. If you're a property investor and you want to buy an off-market property, come and use my company. If you're a landlord and you want to become an anonymous landlord, or at least you want a company to manage the tenancy and the property and your landlording for you, use my business. You can just contact me, tom at p 
pinkstreet.co.uk. I also provide loads of resources and guides and templates for landlords that want to do it themselves. Contact me, tom at pinkstreet.co.uk. So those are the three M's. Now, look, I could get into it massively in terms of strategy, marketing strategy, social social media marketing, all branding, all of those things. I can get into that. But this was about the three M's. This was about the basics of how I got out of where I was and got into where I am now and how I'm going to achieve where I'm going to next. So that's it. Look, this was a, a slightly different episode to what I normally would do, but that's 45 minutes of <laughs> of ranting. Let me know if, look, this was a different episode for me to do because I normally do things about property and everyone, everyone probably thinks that I'm just a property guy. Well, do you know what? I'm not really, I, I, I'm a businessman. And I see property as business and business is business. So when I talk about business, I'm also talking about property. The rules are still the same. Spend less than you spend less than you earn. Set the right infrastructure in place. Build the right machine around it. And have the right give yourself the right mindset. There's loads of mindset stuff, tons of it. And you know what? I could probably I could probably list a hundred different things that I've done to improve my property portfolio and my business. But maybe that's a bit of an episode that's too long. I mean, I've already ranted for 46 minutes now, so I'm going to leave it there. So get in touch. Let me know if this episode was useful and if you got anything from this episode or if you didn't. Maybe let me know if you think, Tom, stop ranting on about money machine and mindset and all that sort of stuff go back to property investing but please do let me know i love it when people give me feedback positive or negative all helps me grow good luck everyone speak to you all again soon